Hi, doing everybody, Jonathan here, and in this video, I'm gonna go over a topic that I think will be helpful for a number of fitness professionals out there, and that is how to train pregnant clients. And although we're not doctors, clients tend to treat us as such, so I wanna make sure that you have some notes that you can understand, that you can help your client, but as always, you wanna refer them to their primary care physician and serve as a backup to the physician. Um, however, I'll give you some tips to make sure that you're okay along the way and that you keep the client and their baby safe. But before I do, if you've not yet, make sure to click on that link up there and subscribe to my newsletter as I send out short articles every Monday on how to see success in the fitness industry. If you just happen to stumble upon this video, make sure to subscribe to this channel by clicking on the YouTube icon below as I make videos every Wednesday based on questions that I get the most. And as always, if you've already subscribed to both my newsletter and to the YouTube channel, thank you very much for your support and find the information in in this video helpful please click on the like button below the video player because every like that I get helps this channel all right so I want to make sure that you keep your clients safe the baby safe so let's go over everything from exercise nutrition to keeping your clients safe the first concern that people usually have when they get pregnant is can I even exercise at all and the answer is it all depends on what you've been doing up until the point of conception. So if a client, let's use six months as a rule of thumb, if your client has been exercising regularly for the past six months, they can continue in their exercising program into the pregnancy. Now, modifications will be made as they go deeper into their pregnancy term, but that does not mean that they need to stop exercising completely. Um, the next concern that clients have is uh, a lot of times I've had clients that were concerned about being pregnant because they did all this work to get in shape and they're afraid that they're gonna get fat, all right? So the, um, you wanna make sure that your client does not engage in a huge caloric deficit. They're eating for two, they're eating for themselves, they're eating for their uh, exercise activity level, and they're eating also for their baby. So you want to deter any kind of major caloric restrictions that your client might make. If you're looking for a rule of thumb on how to properly fuel the body. Instead of encouraging any kind of caloric deficit, you can take your client's weight in pounds, multiply that by 10, and then add 300. Start that as a base for calories, and then you can take that over to their doctor and have their doctor assess how they're moving along in terms of their body, making sure that they get the right number of calories. So for instance, let's say your client weighs 135 pounds. They'll be multiplying that by 10 to 1,350, adding 300 calories for 650 calories to start off, all right? And if their doctor recommends that they consume more calories, fine, but you want to deter them from making any huge caloric uh, restrictions. Now, that does not mean that your client won't have to make dietary restrictions. So once they become pregnant, there are some things that they want to stay away from. Number one, you want to stay away from all forms of alcohol consumption. Number two, you want to stay away from smoking. Number three, you want to stay away from uh, fish with high mercury content. So you want to stay away from tuna. Um, you definitely want to stay away from undercooked fish. So sushi is going to go out the window as well. And then just for the safety of yourself and the baby, you want to stay away from added sugar. Um, you want to stay away from uh, highly processed foods. Um, if you can go organic, that would be ideal, but you want to eat as clean as possible. So even if you may be consuming more calories than you're used to, the fact that you're eating cleaner and taking away all of those unnecessary items, heavy in sugar, um, heavy processed, you're, you're not going to have to worry much about gaining unnecessary weight. All right. Um, you also want to make sure that you drink a ton of water um, throughout your pregnancy, that you keep your body hydrated. So a pregnancy is going to go through three trimesters. Each trimester lasts around 12 weeks. I, being super conservative, usually have my clients uh, stay away from boot camp after their second trimester because if you're in a personal training situation, you keep much more of an eye on your client. But if you're doing a large, large group um, and you want to make sure that your client stays safe, you may want to recommend personal training for them or refer them over to a lower intensity uh, program if you're in a very high intense program where you're not going to be able to keep the client uh, in your eye all the time. All right, so let's talk about what your client can do throughout your trimesters. In the first trimester, you pretty much can do everything that you've been doing with the client. Um, you would just want to stay away from like very heavy abdominal exercising. Um, but for the most part, they continue to exercise as they've been over the last six months. The big changes come as you go into the second trimester. Uh, with the second trimester, you're gonna avoid exercises from the supine position. So you don't wanna put weight on your client for let's say a chest press. Um, you don't want to uh, you don't want a hold position. So even prone positions such as the plank, you don't wanna do for extended period of time. And you also wanna avoid exercises for an isometric hold such as a wall sit, which tends to raise blood pressure. 
All right, um, going into the second and third trimester, your main thing is to make sure that you keep your clients safe. So you want to avoid exercise where there's a lot of jolting. Um, you want to avoid a lot of contact with the tummy to the ground. You want to make sure that your client avoids falling. So um, aside from staying away from prone and supine positions after their first trimester, you want to make sure that your clients are as safe as possible. And it's a risk reward for a number of exercises. So for instance, are box jumps per se all that dangerous for the client and the baby? No, but you have to consider the risk reward where you don't want to put your client in a position where they can fall. So I wouldn't do box jumps with a client. I would do something like step ups. I would stay away from single leg exercises. Um, I'd want them to be completely stable on the floor. Um, I wouldn't necessarily put them on a BOSU ball, whether or not I was spotting them. And if it came to recreational activities such as skiing or let's say biking, I would deter skiing completely and I would advise that the client stays on a stationary bike because we want to avoid any chance of falling and it's all about keeping your client and baby safe. So the intensity of your exercises are going to continue to dwindle down as you go into your second and third trimester. You can use a much more conventional aspect of measuring your client's exertion, which is the talk test. And your client should be very easily able to maintain conversation with you while exercising. If you find that they're constantly gasping for air or if they constantly need breaks, the intensity may be a little bit too high, especially as you go deeper into the pregnancy. You want to keep stress levels low and you want to keep the workout as a tool to help the client stay at ease, to lower stress rates, not to raise them. So let's assume you have your pregnancy, the client's healthy, the baby's healthy, and the client is raring to get back to work. The standard amount of time after pregnancy that the client has to wait before they start exercising again is going to be six weeks. And depending on the type of delivery, there may be some exercises that you want to stay away from. If your client delivers the baby naturally, you may notice some urinary incontinence. So you want to stay away from jumping exercises, jumping jacks, jump ropes in the beginning, as it's not uncommon for clients to pee on themselves a little bit. All right, so you want to keep the intensity on that very low and make sure to warn your client of this just so they're not embarrassed in case they're a first time uh, mom. The second type of delivery is going to be C-section. So in that case, you want to stay away from heavy ab exercises as the midsection is going to be very tender as they've essentially ripped them open. So you're going to want to stay away from exercises on your back where your legs are straight out, such as like uh, bicycles or, or big leg kicks. Um, and then you may find that planks are difficult for your client especially after uh, C-section. So you want to stay more toward rotational exercises such as wood chops with a light ball or with no ball at all or with a light dumbbell until your client regains that abdominal strength. And then once they're ready, then they can start to approach getting back onto the floor for a regular plank. Also, make sure that your client properly hydrates themselves, um, especially if they're breastfeeding. And this whole added caloric uh, need stays the same while your client is breastfeeding because they need to produce the milk. Um, I found in a lot of cases, it's really just trial and error that uh, if you have a lot of cruciferous vegetables such as your broccoli or your cauliflower, it may make the baby gassy. So just keep note of how the baby responds to the breastfeeding if you're consuming a lot of those uh, foods. Funnily enough, I find that clients say that, you know, having bread and like really bland foods helps them when it comes to breastfeeding. But if you're a new mom or if you're a mom that's had a baby and went through the whole thing and you want to contribute to helping new moms or trainers give advice, definitely put that in the comment section below. But that's about it. Um, I'm going to stop the video there. I think I've given you enough cliff notes to make sure that you are properly equipped to handle a pregnant client because our goal as fitness professionals is to make sure that our clients walk out safer and better off than they were before they got with us. So make sure to keep your clients safe, keep your mind on the baby, and I guarantee you that you'll have a very thankful client. They'll be right back to normal as soon as the pregnancy and the six weeks is over, and you'll be able to have a healthy client with a healthy son or daughter. So that's about it. I hope you found this video helpful. Remember, if you have any comments or concerns, put them in the comment section below. Remember, your questions are what fuel the videos on this channel. So I'd be happy to get any feedback from you guys. Um, as always, if you're looking for more advice on how to better run your business, I definitely recommend to check out my Dumbbells to Dollars course. It's a CEU approved course for ACE, NASM, ISSA, NSCA, and AFA. Um, it will also teach you how to brand your business, how to grow your business, how to train in groups so that you're working fewer hours and able to make more money. It will teach you once you're ready how to go out on your own, how to see success, and how to market. Finally, we'll go over nutrition. So it's the full package and it is everything that you need as a fitness professional to see success. So definitely, I recommend that you click on 
that image right there. Check out the course. But I'll be back next week. I hope you found this video helpful. Um, if you come across new pregnant clients, make sure to reference this video. And as always, remember to eat healthy, hydrate, drive safe, stress levels, all good rest. Don't slap anybody. Love your clients. They'll love you back. I'll see you all tomorrow or the next day. And you have a good one.